Hi guys and welcome to the fourth and final for the time being video in my mini series on respiration, the fundamentals exam technique. We've done this question, we've done this question, we've done this question, all the way through to my fourth and final question, which is here. So we are confronted with a mitochondrion and it says that the diagram here is representing two of the stages of aerobic respiration. So two things that happen in aerobic respiration that take place in a mitochondrion. So we can eliminate glycolysis straight away. We're thinking link, we're thinking Krebs, and we are thinking electron transport chain. So for question A, it's going to ask us to name substance X. So there's substance X entering the mitochondrion. So first of all, we must be thinking, hey, well, the substance, the only thing that can enter the mitochondrion, the only thing we've got transport proteins for is pyruvate, which is the end product of glycolysis. So there we go. That's our first answer there, pyruvate. Pyruvate is the compound which enters into the mitochondrion. So which stage of aerobic respiration takes place inside a mitochondrion and is not represented on the diagram? Well, let's have a look. We've got two stages. One stage is here and one stage is here. The first stage, the one that involves substance X, which we've identified as pyruvate, entering the mitochondrion, and then because NAD is reduced, it becomes oxidized, and we get this compound acetyl-CoA formed at the end. And this is, of course, link reaction. So all of this here, this is all link. Okay, so this bit over here is the second stage, so it's got to be either Krebs or electron transport chain. So a couple of clues as to what's going on. First thing, oxygen's involved. The only stage that oxygen is involved with is electron transport chain or oxidative phosphorylation. It's the only place we see oxygen. The other clue is the fact that NAD is being formed, so the reduced coenzyme is being oxidized, and again, this only happens in uh, the electron transport chain. The other clue is that it's happening on the cristae. So those folded bits of inner membrane, the cristae, um, is where the enzymes for electron transport happens. Oh, ah, sorry. Um, so the final one that's missing then is Krebs. So Krebs cycle is missing. There we are. Two questions done. What else have we got here? Explain why oxygen is needed for the production of ATP on the cristae. Okay, as soon as you see oxygen in any question about respiration, you need to be thinking electron transport chain. You need to be thinking final electron acceptor, which is what it does. So we can say, first of all, that oxygen is the final electron acceptor. It's going to mop up the electrons from the electron transport chain. It's also going to mop up the protons as well. And in that, by doing that, it forms water. So it forms water using E minus electrons and H plus. Protons. Cool. That's only two marks though and it wants three. So it's saying why is it needed for the production of ATP? So we're going to attack that question by saying what would happen if we didn't have oxygen. So if I draw out some carrier proteins down here, these are my electron carrier proteins, down here is oxygen. Now my electrons, they pass along from carrier protein to carrier protein. They jump, in turn, reducing each one. Then finally, they form water with oxygen and some of the protons that have been transported through ATP synthase. Now, if we don't have oxygen, we can't do this, we can't do this, we can't do this, we can't do any of electron transport. And if we can't do electron transport, we can't re-oxidize the reduced coenzymes. And that means we can't do link. We can't do Krebs, we can't do anything apart from anaerobic respiration and glycolysis. So the, the consequence of not having oxygen would be that the whole chain would back up and wouldn't get any ATP. So we're going to say that 
if oxygen is not present, we'll just keep it in, it's only asking about the crystal, so we'll only talk about the crystal. So if O2 is not present, electrons cannot move between carriers. And as we know, if we can't move between carriers, then we can't produce a very small amount of energy, we can't pump protons into the intermembranal space, and therefore we can't pass them back through ATP synthase, generating ATP. There we go. should put uh, protein carriers there, really. Sorry, I've got, mis I've got sidetracked. But there we go. Three marks. That's it. That is the last part of my Respiration Fundamentals exam technique video. Thank you very much for watching. Um, I'll do a couple more of these exam technique videos because I think they are quite useful, or I hope they are. Um, I'm more than welcome any feedback or comments you might